I said, we're coming to you now. Okay. You turn with them? It's on. We need healing of the body. We need healing of the mind. Great physician. Only you can bring the healing that we need. Great physician, only you can bring the healing that we need. Help me say, we need healing. The body, of the body. Yes, we do. Yes, we, we do. Healing, oh Lord, the mind. Great physician, only you. Bring it, Lord. Bring the healing that we need. Oh. came to earth in the body of flesh people were bound and tormented by spiritual wickedness you know sickness and disease was without remedy and the power of darkness was without mercy Jesus took the power from the captor, oh yes he did, and he gave to us the right to liberty, his chastisement brought us peace, thank you Lord, he was bruised for our iniquity, oh with his stripes, with his stripes we are healed, hey. Somebody, touch somebody. Oh, Lord. And bring the healing that we so desperately need. You see, Jesus came to earth in the body of flesh. People were bound and tormented by spiritual wickedness. Yes, they were. Sickness and disease was without remedy. And the power of darkness came without mercy. Lord. We need healing. Calling on your Jesus. Make us whole. Yeah. Lord, nobody bring that we need. Oh, 
touch the Lord as it walked by. Yeah. Hey, Jesus. Calling on you. Nobody but you, Lord. Bring it, Lord. That we need. Great position. Only you can bring the healing that we need. I want to testify. I'm going to testify. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. Welcome, welcome one more time. Good evening to you and welcome to Testimonies tonight. And uh, we wanna thank you for stopping by. As I always say, you might be scrolling by, but you stop by to see us. And so we really appreciate you. Tonight, we wanna be talking about prodigal sons and prodigal doors tonight, for we realize that it is the end time. Time is winding up winding up and so we have tonight with us we have pastor stam who is going to be testifying along with him uh we have my brother kasan weekly um, i received um, some sad news on last week's sunday that a great friend of mine was killed she was killed by an accident a car um ran over her and so we want to remember families tonight in a prayer we want to remember pastor pickett has lost his dear mom and hope denial he she has gone home we want to remember the families of francis gustave and i also remember my producer al baptiste senior he passed away um about four or five years ago but it was on yesterday i remember clearly I was at his best side when he breathed his last breath. I think about all the musicians who have played with me, like Neil Simon, Lee Hampton, Wayne Brathwaite, Felix Emmanuel. I think about them, Reginald Williams, who have played with me and have been there with me. I just want to say, um, my condolences to all the family who are who are now grieving to everyone. I may not be able to call your names, but you know who you are. And we pray for the strength of God when you cannot rely on your strength. The only strength that you can rely on is the strength of God. And so I'm gonna call on the engineer. Lots of people have been asking me, who is this engineer? He's not showing himself. One of these days, we're gonna bring him out. His name is Pastor John Gilbert. He's the pastor of the Frederickstead um, Baptist Church. And Pastor Gilbert, you may not remember the names. You can tell the Lord to remember the family of all these deceased who are now grieving. And so um, we want to turn it over to you so you can say a word of prayer, Pastor Gilbert. Thank you so much, uh, brother. I really appreciate that. Uh, yesterday, today, uh, well, uh, was my brother's birthday who just passed away as well. You know, so definitely remember those who have passed away. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before your throne of grace. At your throne, Father God, there is mercy to upgrade, to obtain grace to help in the time of need, Father God. So we pray over every family member <laughs> that is grieving, that is remembering loss of love and loved ones, Father God, that has gone on, Father God. On special occasions and special times, Father God, they they miss them, Father God. As my very own nephew just said today, that 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 it's been a rough day for him as he reflects and he remembers his dad who has passed away. As his birthday is on here today, Father God. So we pray your strength in their lives, Father God. We pray they, your comfort in their lives, Father God. And we pray as we talk to these loved ones, Father God, that you will 
fill us with the right words of comfort to be able to say to them and to speak to them, Father God, so that they can have strength in the in the day, Father God, because we know it can be difficult. The nights can be long and lonely and difficult for them as well, Father God. God, as testimonies is shared today, Father God, we ask you to bless the testifiers, Father God, Pastor Samuel, Father God, Minister Kassan, Father God, bless them as they share, Father God, their journey with you and, and how you have brought them through and how you, you have been there with them all the time, Father God, even when you was not noticeable, Father God, you've been there with all the time. Bless this program. We thank you for the visionary, Father God, for that. We thank you for how it's impacting people's lives and helping people to know, Father God, that testimonies is important. That's why you allow us to have them because we speak and they speak of the goodness of you, your grace. They speak of your mercy. They speak Hallelujah. of your kindness and, and, and your purpose Hallelujah, in the lives Jesus. of people, Father God. So we just thank you, Father God. Mm. Bless every hearer, Father God, and let them gain something. Hallelujah. From Apply to the life. Most of all, someone don't know you who may be viewing now or later, Father God. Hallelujah. They come to know you, Father, as the Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Sister Cecilia Abraham, Old Miracle Revival Warrior, um, Sister Sister Wheatley, that's Zaya, Z. That's Brother Kassan's wife. And so tonight we have with us a prodigal son. He was a prodigal son. He's back home. And so he's going to testify. And the reason why I have this, because I realize that time is winding up. These are time mothers. So we, 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 we will turn our plates down and pray for our children. Let's not never give up on our children. The enemy wants us to give up, but we're not going to give up on them. Praise God. And so tonight, I have my own uncle tonight to speak about his journey and how he came back. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Testimonies tonight. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome all of you. Unless you say something, I don't know that you're there. So talk to us uh, in, in a text. We will respond to you. All right. So tonight we want to call my uncle and my dear brother, Kassan. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good well, to be with you guys. Smile on your face. <laughs> Welcome to yeah. you, Brother Kassan. So nice having you tonight. Um, I'm looking My pleasure to be Sam. here. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. I know one of these days you're gonna come and share your testimony. You got a you got a testimony that the world need to hear about of the goodness of God. But however, tonight we are having um Pastor Samuel Joseph tonight. The screen is yes. kind of black. Are you hearing us there? <laughs> are you hearing us pastor sam well anyway pa um brother kassan welcome and i know that you're you 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 are you're a minister in your own rights you know yes. pastor but you're one of those who spread the gospel of jesus christ yeah and you're now living in living in florida I won't say where you live in, uh -huh. but you're living in Florida, uh -huh. and you are a Virgin Islander. Not only that, you're born in St. Croix, born and bred uh, in St. Croix. Born in New York, you raised in St. Croix. Oh, New York. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So I get to flash two signals, NY and... Uh, VI. <laughs> um, VI. 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 Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, VI. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Pastor Sam, could you come in? I know you're on the outside. Come in, sit in my seat, and then you can start your testimony from there. So, we won't waste any time. Because time is of the essence. Let me see who all is on. Oh, my bestie, Grace, she's on. She also lost her husband recently. Glenda, Joseph, welcome. And um, Chantal, welcome. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. 
Thank you for joining us on Testimonies. You know, anytime that the Lord has something for you to do, the enemy always tries to mess with it. I'm telling you this, we are victorious, we are overcomers, we are more than conquerors, and testimonies will be heard, will be heard. So, Uncle Sam, sit right here while I go work with that out there. Thanks again for joining us. My goodness, my goodness. <laughs> Technology, we can't do without it, but um, sometimes it comes to bite us in the gluteus maximus. A blessed evening to all the beloved Good evening. And, fearfully and fearfully and wonderfully made. We have a few second delays and uh, on the responses and everything. Um, first of all, I want to thank Corella. Uh, and Pastor Gilbert, I want to thank you all so much. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. I want to give thanks first to the El Elyon, the most high sovereign God of the universe, the everlasting God, the great God, the living God, the merciful God, the faithful God. He is truth, justice, righteousness, and perfection. And this evening, uh, my test and uh, all the people that um, Harella mentioned before, uh, a blessed evening to all those. Some of the names I recognize and know the people, so forth. My son, um, worry in the Lord. But let me start this testament because they say I only have 15 minutes and they claim they tag me and label me as a long winded person, but I don't see myself as such. Amen. <laughs> yes, let's go back to the Genesis, the beginning. I was born on an island, Antigua, in a small village by the name of Pears Village. And I came to these islands as a child and was raised here. And you can take the Antiguan out of Antigua, but you can't take Antigua out of the Antiguan. So I'm still true blue to the bone, to the marrow Antiguan. Now, my mother birthed me to be a man of God, a child of God. Let me explain that. Her age is when she had me. She had four children before she had me. She had four children and the youngest was 13 years old. In her old age, she asked God, according to the book of Samuel, and her story parallels the, the story in, in a Samuel story. She prayed the prayer of Hannah and ask God for a male child. Lord, if you give me a male child, I will dedicate him to you. So those were the circumstances around my birth. Soon after she prayed that prayer, she had a dream. You see, my mother was a dreamer and she saw visions. She had a dream about a baby child, a baby boy, and the bottom of his foot she saw the name John written on the bottom of the baby's foot in the dream. So therefore she named me John. And of course the story Samuel, she named me Samuel also. That's how come I have my name. But she dedicated me to the Lord and said, the Lord, I'll give him to you. And she actually brought me up in the fear of the Lord, I was raised in the church, born and raised in the church, like so many of you out there. And I'm, I'm here to testify that a entourage of demonic diabolical forces who come after you, once you are a pastor's son or you were raised in the church, so they need some extra prayers. 
the point of this testimony is that it doesn't matter how it looks and your child look like they are unrecoverable, unredeemable. Do not give up on them. I'm here to testify. I'm a witness that you do not give up on children. She was 48 years old when she gave birth to me. An unusual thing happened during the, the uh, labor pains. Who was in there? My father got in the truck in those days. I'm talking about the 50s. I'm not talking about 1970 or 1960. I'm talking about the 50s. I'm a 50s child, 50s baby. My father jumped in the truck, tried to try to um, to go to get the midwife. In those days, midwife came to your house and helped your mom with the birthing process. So on his way to a place called Param, which is probably about five to ten miles away, I'm sure, but it's, it's a good distance away, to go and get the midwife to come and help with the birthing process. The lights on the truck would not light. So my father continued with the mission he did was put my older brother on the fender of the truck with a flashlight. This is dark 30 in the morning. Hmm. Dark 30 in the morning. Remember those days you didn't have all these street lights. So everything was pitch dark. So my brother got on the fender of the truck when it got to midnight and I was born on the 24th of February. That was yesterday. So now, <laughs> so now, remember I was born and raised church. Was birth to be a man of God, raised to be a man of God. I memorize Psalm 121 when I leave the house to go out the shanty to wait for the bus. The 23rd Psalm, I knew all those as a little child. And I believe that they protected me because in those days, like I said, everything was dark. You walk in out to the shanty, you walk in between sugar cane. Nobody on the road but you. A little child, five, six, seven, eight years old. But anyway, let me move on because it's 15 minutes I have. A significant thing happened as a teenager. Now, here's a child raised in the church, believe in miracles, believe in God, believe in his power, his might, and everything. I had a motorcycle in those days, a little part-time job in Frederick Spratt Hall. My nephew came to help me that day cut the grass and do some, uh, in my little part-time job, teenager. So from the job, we took off to go to Kramer's Park. My nephew and I, we were tight. This guy looked just like him, Kassan. They could be twins. <laughs> and we took off, went to Kramer Park, and we had a situation where he got drowned. Significantly changed my life. Was on the way, the ambulance came, there was a nurse on the scene. This was an Easter weekend. There was a nurse on the scene that was administering CPR and everything that she could do. When the ambulance came, I was in the ambulance. I'm praying all the way to Charles Harwood Hospital. And I just knew that God was guiding him. I'm there sitting in the waiting room and the nurse came out and gave me his trunks and say, he did not make it. When she told me that, there was a paradigm shift that changed my entire life. Disappointed in the God that I knew and was raised and believed that he was who the Bible said he was. And to see that he did not answer such a vital prayer in my life as a teenager. 
that put a spin. I it turned me topsy turvy, and I was disappointed in God. I was very disappointed in God for real. So after that, I was still going to church. But I was numb, going through the motions. Begin to hate church. Didn't like Christians talking to me about God and all of that. But what put my foot to the fire also was a year later, my saintly holy mother died on Christmas week. <laughs> I was already numb. So the blow was not that uh that terrible when my mother died i knew where she was going i remember she always said lord when you take me take me in my sick bed so that i can get everything right body before i leave so prayed so the lord did that i used to avoid the christians coming to pray for her they gather around the table it, to me it was I mean, what's the use of you people praying? In my mind, I didn't tell, didn't disrespect anybody, but in my mind, I'm saying, what's the use of you people praying? They they, they gather around a bed, the church came and they prayed. I would love them. And I would come to see my mother when they were gone. As a teenager, I did not like church at all. It came to the point where I became of age where my father worked shift. So I had a field day when he was working hang out with the wrong crowd i took her in hanging out with those people who are diametrically opposed to kingdom people i thought it was fun i was having the fun of my life but i was empty bruised depressed my depression took me into like another direction. Not the kind of depression where you sleep and you're quiet, but it took me like a whirlwind. Not too long after that, I was in Central High School. Out of Central High School, I went straight to the army. And that's where the debauchery and partying and clubbing. I lived in the club. I was the party hardy person, for real. And that was my lifestyle, my entire adult life. I had to tell this particular part, how the hand of the Lord was on me. He was chasing me down. He had a bullseye in my back. The party was great as long as the party lasted. When the party was over, the emptiness came back. It no matter how good the party was how much ladies i hang with how how much liquor i drank and i was hum dance i dance up and everything after the party is over and you're left by yourself you, you're wondering what in the world is this what what was it what's the what's what's it what's the big deal about it so the emptiness comes back Everybody sees you and they think that you got it going on and everything, but you don't. One thing, uh, let me let me say this for the teenagers that may see this, because this is about the prodigal son. And parents don't give up on your children. I remember one night in Bethlehem, where the sugar factory is. They have the National Guard there right now. And I often tell young men this story. We were hanging out, they had a, uh, a bleachers over there, they had a ball field. We used to hang out in the bleachers. That night, we stupidly, because teenagers usually drink, it seemed like we drink stupid juice, idiot juice. So it's just like that, that idiotic <laughs> syndrome came upon us. And I, the guy, who was born and raised to be a child of God, came up with the idea 
to get some money. We will hide in the cane field with big stones. That road that uh, to the west of the National Guard on a Friday in those days, everybody get paid on Friday night now. That road used to be loaded with people up and down this going to shop in um Calcahoon. We hid in the cane field with bones. And the plan was to knock somebody out and take their money so we will have some money. Now, my parents used to provide everything I needed. Think about this. How the devil follows you when you're raised in church. An entourage of imps, my mother called them, follow you around to make sure that you don't fulfill your destiny. So we waiting at the cane field, waiting for somebody to pass by. We'll knock them out and take the money. Now think about this. If you hit somebody in the head with a stone, what do you think will happen? They can die. Now the road that people always crowd on a Friday night, listen, not one person came down that road that night. Wow. Tell me. Tell me if people was not yeah. praying for me, man. Tell me. When I look back on that, we could have killed somebody. There are ways that God tried to get your attention. He could have gotten my attention in a jail cell, but he chose not to do it that way. <laughs> and I bless God for that moment. Every, uh, every time I talk about this, I saw what we could have done that night. I was in two plus two. This is fast forward to the max. I came back home to St. Croix for good. I was in the army for 20 years and I was away for about 23 years. And so I decided to come back home for good. My wife stayed in, in the Virginia because the my youngest was not finished with high school yet. So I was here by myself. So I was in two plus two, man, getting ready to do some partying. I'm looking around the crowd. I said, tonight is going to be the night. I had my greenie on the bar talking to bartender talking to the waitress and i heard loud not audibly but in my entire being in my system this is a waste of time you are wasting your time and i knew exactly who it was and what happened to me that night I left the other, whether it was half full or half empty, I don't remember. I left my greenie on the bar and I walked out. The next day I was no good. I still had like a six pack of uh, greenie left. Try to drink one and couldn't drink it. It tasted jacked up to me. I had to throw everything away. Son, Harella and all the people in, well, those two are the significant ones that they used to bother me. Harella especially used to bother me. Uncle Sam, when are you going to change your life and serve the Lord? I couldn't stand that. Any church people come talk to me about the Lord, I have scriptures too to backfire on them and say, no sin is greater than no sin. All sins are the same. So your sin is just as great as my sin. And stuff like that to back them off. But I was inside. I was... Uh, I happened to... Uh, driving home Kassan one day. Taking him home. Giving him a ride home. So Hold he, a second. Uh-huh. I'm holding. I want people to know that when you have a child and you're praying for your children especially the male seed the attack that the enemy have on the male seed and for real too. but ladies are more softer you know they come in great. but the male seed there's an attack on them what this broadcast is saying to you today do not give up on your male seed do not give up on your children do not give up on your family because sometimes we want to be God, 
but let the Holy Ghost deal with them. All right, I know we got half an hour and it's already gone, but we're gonna continue with this. Who wants to watch it? Watch it. But I'm here to encourage you, backsliders, come back to God. Time is short, come back to God before it's too late. This is a warning. This is a warning. Yes. So, Brother Kassan, who looks like my brother so much. I just love this young man so much. You know how much I love this young man. Because he replaced my brother. Every time I see him, it's my brother. One day, I remember Uncle Sam came to help me in the daycare. And Uncle Sam tell that quickly what happened. <laughs> no, I was here to renovate this place. Place I'm sitting in right now. This was a daycare center. And I was having to renovate. I saw this guy walking down. I almost had a heart attack. I tell you, if my bowels was that day, it would have been a messy situation because when I saw him pass down, I ran to Herrera. I said, Herrera, you saw that guy? You see that guy? I said, what guy? I said, a guy, a guy, a guy, a guy. I said, he looked just like Ickford. That's Herrera's yeah. brother who drowned in Kramer Park one that yeah. I prayed for and God did not restore him. That's the one I'm yeah. talking about. Kassan is the spitting image of that young man. Yep. So when I yep. saw him, I almost, <laughs> I flipped yes, for real. Yes. You welcome Kassan and you're sitting there, you're just smiling. Tell us about the day because Uncle Sam, he didn't want nobody to talk to him about God. Rebellious. No. But but Kassan, you met him a day. You tell us about the experience that you had when you asked him if he was a Christian. Well, it would be my pleasure. Um, thanks for having me on the broadcast. I'm enjoying this so much. This is amazing and <laughs> awesome. And I am reveling in the glory, the goodness, and the mercy of God. Do not give up on your young, anybody, but especially young men, because God has something special, even if it's a cuff for his, for the stubborn backslider or for those that are running from him. He knows how to he knows how to rein them and how to bring them in in love. So thank God I was privileged to be saved in around 1994. Uh, went to Miracle Bible Deliverance Tabernacle, met the awesome Virginia Ventura, Pastor Virginia Ventura, was grafted in to her family because, as mentioned, I bear a striking resemblance to Pastor Ventura's son, Sister Herla's brother, and Pastor Sam's nephew. And I, I, I hold that in, in somber regard, in solemn regard, because I mean, that's, that's such an awesome thing that it is that way, you know, and I truly have great respect for that. And love you guys the same, love you guys the same. And so Pastor Sam, mm -hmm. I, I remember that day, and I thought like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, <laughs> whoa. You know, but just to fast forward a little bit, so we got well, I liked him. He was like a cool dude to me. He was like Shaft, you know, he wasn't a Christian or no, I wasn't sure that he was a Christian. So back then being a young convert, you know, we're very um, righteous, you know, we hold to the letter of the law and he just seemed a little wishy-washy to me. Yeah, he's a pastor's brother, but he be, he be doing some things and he be, you know, I think he's just sliding. He's just skirting rails. I don't know if he's 100%. He's not all in like the rest of us, the rest of the young people at church. So um, we had uh, decided to go on a fast up in a mountain. And um, for us, it was easy to do. I didn't really have a job. I was working as a church part-time. So it was easy for me to run off and do things like that. And we invited Pastor Ventura. And so long story short, myself, Pastor Ventura, two other young people, and uh, uh, another sister from the church, we all went up into the, up a near, behind Carambola, to pray and fast for three days. So on the second day, Pastor Ventura shared with us that she was praying for her brother, Pastor Sam, and that he was supposed to come pick us up on the third day. And she said, when he comes, she really felt from the Lord that she's going to ask him if he will give his heart to Christ. Now, <laughs> I'm not really sure whether this happened before the mountain or after, <laughs> but, one day, Pastor Sam was giving me a ride home. 
and uh, I was asking him. I, I just I couldn't rest. I needed to it ask was him before. this question. I didn't want to guess. It was before. Okay, good. So no. I didn't want to. I didn't want to guess for. I didn't want to tell myself a story. Yeah, man, he's safe. He just kind of literally. He needs some help, you know. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I wanted to be sure. So I asked him. So, are you a Christian? And he 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 was driving, and he looked at me, and I could see that this really irked him. This like. This bothered him. We've never been that way, you know. And he was like, yeah, I'm a Christian, you know. And I could see he was driving. His lip was pushed up and his mustache was wrinkled. And I was like, oh, so he's one of them lawless Christians. Oh, man. Oh, man. He looked at me like shaft. I mean, he looked at me. He bore a hole in my skull with his eyes like, how dare you, yeah. you know? And he, you could see, like, like when you shake a bottle of soda, open it, you could see, like, the soda wanted to call his mouth. He wanted to tell me a couple of things. I don't know what held him back. He exercised great restraint, you know? Man, he was hot. He, he was hot. I, I don't know if I was going to get a backhand, I don't know if I was going to get some too good bad water, but oh man, he was hot, you know, and I don't really remember what he answered me, but I just felt that I need, at that point in time, I needed to let him know what my perspective was. Yes. Oh, Kassan, let me tell you something. I understand what you're saying because when Uncle Sam get mad, you know, back in the day, yeah. he used to get really, yeah. really, really, really upset. So I imagine what you're talking about. So Uncle Sam, when he asked you if you were a Christian and then he told you, oh, yeah, so you're one of them lawless Christian, right? What was your response? How did you understand that? Man, that was before that was before the mountain experience. Before Blue Mountain, before Blue Mountain, and I was livid when he made that statement because everybody and their grandparents these days claim that they're Christian just because they go to a Christian church. So I said, "Okay, I'm a Christian," and he said, "So you want them lawless Christian?" I had just come out of the military, so I was still in that mode where I could strangle this dude, you know. <laughs> Because it, I was convicted, it pierced to my marrow. My God! So that, tell us about your experience on the mountain, because it's now seven forty-five. It's gotten longer than we expected. Tell us about the experience on the mountain. Well, I apologize for that, but that very weekend, he didn't tell you. Mm. I drove them up the mountain top. It was the very weekend that I heard in 2 plus 2 that you're wasting your time. It was the very weekend I walked out of 2 plus 2. It was the very weekend that I was trying to drink from a six-pack and could not endure the taste of the beer. Mm. Mm. Well, the Sunday, the Sunday, it began to drizzle. So I said, let me go up there and get them so they wouldn't get wet. When I went up mm -hmm. in the bush and I bust around the corner, they begin to cheer. I'm saying, well, they're glad to see me because it's raining. Not knowing they had, it was, it was a setup. God had set mm -hmm. me up. Mm -hmm. And they say, can, the pastor said, can I pray for you? I said, sure, you know. And she said that prayer, and I knew exactly what she was going to ask at the end of the prayer before she said, are you ready to serve the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your Before she could finish the question, I said, yes, I will. <laughs> July 14, 1996. July Hallelujah. 14, 1996. The Lord have a way of just following you around. So keep praying for your children. I'm jumping out of the plane and I'm thinking, I'm so bothered. I'm thinking, if I... If, I, if my parachute don't open, I'm going to confess right quick. Confess quickly so I wouldn't go to hell. All these things are happening when you're running from the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. What was it? The airborne? 82nd Airborne Division. 
Right. So as you was jumping out your parachute, you were just praying because mm. God was there all the time. Yeah. Then I was waiting thinking. On you, just waiting on you. I was thinking. You see, I didn't. I didn't. I always respected God, even though I didn't want anything to do with um with the church thing. I just started going to mm. church when I came back home. Just the appearance. Mm. Go through the motion, right? Because my sister was the pastor of the right. church, so I went through the motion. Come yeah. to church. That's why they asking me. The young people asking her, "Rella, is your uncle? Is Uncle Sam uh, saved?" And she would know what to tell him. Any time that you're running away from God, any little thing that somebody will tell you, it will upset you. But tonight yeah. we want to say that if you're a backslider out there. Look at the season that we're living in. The word of God is fulfilling right in front of our very eyes. And so tonight, parents, sisters, brothers, don't give up praying for your family members. Because God, in due time, go reel them in. Go reel them Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you so much for those words that you told him. That's why when we meet people, we should not be ashamed. We should tell them about the love of God. These are the times we concentrate on so many other things. And how many people have we met during the course of the day and never tell them about the love of God? Never. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know what God is doing within them. So we must tell them about the love of god go ahead and when you finish Let me just, this, we gotta go you're gonna say a yeah prayer we gotta go and dismiss i just want to put mm. i just want to put this one thing in there mm. don't care how upset people get when you tell them about, about god it's the sword of the spirit which is piercing their hearts when they get upset they could have been hey. somebody like me being convicted every time somebody try to tell you to change your life i don't oh. care how mad they get the lord is working on them he's trying to draw them so don't get discouraged if somebody get mad at you, cuss you off if you tell them about Jesus Christ. It's all it's all good. Just know that they're yes. being convicted. He's working on them. He's working on them. He's working He's on working them. On and don't them. give up. Don't you ever give up on your family member. And I believe every time you get closer, they get close and they, they keep hearing the voice of God. It's the more upset they become. So mm -hmm. any little yeah. thing would trigger them off. Yeah. So I want you to pray for her um the, the the backsliders tonight again i i, I want to just thank you all uh, lonette lonette i want to thank you for coming in i know we went over the time but so important and pastor gilbert always say forget about the time you know when it's a testimony just let them testify i want to thank my friends in new york I want to thank you, myself. I want to thank you for dropping in. Uh, Priscilla, you're there. Thank you so much for dropping in tonight and, and hearing the testimony. Testimonies come in all forms. And salvation is one of the greatest testimony. Monique James, who else is there? Cleon, God bless you also. I just want to encourage you, continue, continue to cover. I was listening to Pastor to John Finn today and he said when you cover your family you cover the whole clan everybody when you cover your friend you just cover everybody so we just cover the territory and we cover our family Sicily Challenger Lord have mercy you remember Sicily Sicily Challenger yes, yes. You probably don't remember oh your sister Reynolds daughter yes, yes. Beverly Beverly Gilbert, I just want, we, we are live tonight, so I just want to call you guys' name. I mean, it's supposed to be 15 minutes, but, you know, sometimes it goes longer than we expect it to go. Camilla, God bless you. We're showcasing God tonight. Again, I can't say it enough. Do not stop. Do not stop. When you bring your family to God, don't stop. Don't stop. And so, Pastor Sam, just a word of prayer to the backsliders. Right now, a lot of people may not be watching, but as a, they, they will tune in from time to time. So, to the backsliders, and you, this is not the time to straddle the fence. It is not the time. It is not the time. Man, my
my inside just I just say, look how people just going around like like they la 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 and, 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 and they won't even concentrate or think about God. But for those of us, my God, that know God, hold on to the unchanging hands of God. I don't want to preach because this isn't supposed to be a preaching day. But Kassan, thanks again for coming. Is there anything you want to say, Kassan, before Uncle Sam pray? Yeah, Kassan. just real brief. I just thank God to be a part of uh, his testimony, just to be there to see the fulfillment yes. of the promise that, uh, or the prayer, the answer to the prayer that and Father probably prayed for him, and be a part of what um, God did. I look at, I have respect for Pastor Sam greatly. I love him. To me, he's like the Christian version of Shaft. He's one cool, smooth <laughs> brother. Can you dig it? But I also know that God is raising wow. him up like a tree. Right, that shall I know <laughs> bring forth his fruit in due season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does will prosper, because the God that watches over Israel also watches over that shiny bald head. I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay, Uncle Sam, you could go ahead and pray. Short prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. You said that we overcome by our testimony, the word of our testimony, and by the blood precious blood of the lamb father we we say to the the lord of the harvest that you send for yeah. laborers lord to meet the backsliders where they are right now mm. because you said you married to the backslider and you are concerned about where they end up so lord we thank you for those laborers who are speaking the words of wisdom with their uh, speech being seasoned with salt. So Holy Ghost, mm. draw them now. Draw them. Yes, and then arrest them yes. where they are right now. If they hear mm -hmm. these words and this testimony, let them uh, be convicted like I was and come mm -hmm. to know you like eternal. In the name of Jesus. If you heard the testimony today and you, uh, the Lord is drawing you right now, say after me, God in heaven, God cleanse in heaven. me from all my sins. Cleanse, cleanse me, me with from all my sins. Make me, me clean. Make me, Make clean. me your child. Make I receive me your child. Jesus as my Savior. I receive Jesus my as Lord, my Savior. My own. My Lord. My Satan, I denounce you this day. Satan, I denounce you this day. Lord fill in me heaven. with the Holy Ghost and fill fire. me with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Once again, we want to thank you so much for joining us on Testimonies, Sister Sylvia Archibald. Thank you also for joining us. We thank you so much, Kassan and Uncle Sam, for sharing your testimonies. And tonight, if you know someone that has lost their love ones continue to pray for them as strength you know grief grieving man is it's not an easy thing and nobody can tell or tell someone how to grieve everybody grieves differently the strength if you're lost your loved one we just pray for your strength and uh, in the lord and in the power of his might thanks again once again if, um for joining us on testimony or we pray that you will stay tuned next week and if you have a testimony please let me know and so you can be on the show so that you can showcase god that's what the show is about show god and his goodness thanks again love you all may god bless you have a wonderful weekend and bask in the presence of the lord may god bless you I wanna testify. I'm gonna testify. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. Mercy.